the fact that he's still going forward at this pace, it's crazy. Now I show a wall, and then Peter call me zero. Who's zero now? Who's zero? Marab, the machine, do all this winning! Do not doubt the old guard, the veterans like Tim Elliott. I just, I still got a long way to go in this sport, and I'm just glad I got a new contract and get to keep showing this. Your winner from Kansas City, Tim Elliott! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous! <laughs> Me. We're at it. All right, Jimmy, you're ready. Okay. Oh my die, Jimmy, so you might have to just bring up those questions I might forget. What's that? Uh, my phone might die, so you might have to bring up those questions. Oh, okay. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Matt's phone might die, as you just heard. Oh, um, because somebody forgets to plug it in. Why do you why do you throw me under the bus with that? I'm not. My wife does it all the time. It drives me nuts. I'm like, I'm like, how do you not plug your phone in? She just doesn't. She's always on. I'll ask her to do something. She's like, I'm on one percent. So I'm like your work wife, Jimmy. Kind of, yeah. I'll ask her to film me nude running around the apartment, and she just can't do it because well, maybe she's lying. Maybe she just doesn't want to see me naked. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to today's show, Matt. Not just because it's you and I, okay. But also because um, we have Marab on, who we have not had in quite a while. Right. Huge fight for Marab coming up, and Tim Elliott, who I enjoy very much. Hey, man. Uh, I'm excited about. It. I'm sorry, I'm stretching, Jimmy. I I I taught two classes today. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't want a cookie for it. I mean, it's my school. I should be teaching. Of course. But, you know, it was fun. Mixed it up a little bit. It was maybe it was some people's. Um, it's a mixed classes, so it, it's. I'm sure it's a lot of guys' first time they're they're um. Um, transitioning into an ashi. Yeah. You know what an ashi is? Um, it's a, a, a leg grab, right? Ooh, ho, 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 Jimmy, Jimmy. I'm not I, that advanced. I haven't done that. Yeah, it's not. Listen, I don't. I make it easy. I make it easy. I you know do jitsu for dummies. I was escaping from uh, side control today. He was showing me two different ways to do that, and. Um, also, then how to like uh, either uh, to pull someone into guard and reverse from that or uh, oh, yeah. which working on triangles, which were still always a little hard for me to know where the arm goes. But, you know, whatever. I'm getting there. It's fun. And you're getting a workout, too. You're, you're sweating a little bit. No, dude. He'll say Mike will say the guy I train with his name is Martin. He's like a blue belt, but he trains every day and he moves amazingly well. So when it's like when Mike wants me to work, he'll go, all right, just chase him. Make him follow you. So he'll just constantly get out of everything I'm doing and I have to follow him and just stay with him and not get lost and just be able to move from position to position and at least yeah. attempt something that he's better than me so he gets out of it. But I love it. It's a, a terribly hard workout, though. I have so much fun. I do. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, I want to talk about Marab's fight. With, yes, uh, it's Henry, yeah. What do you think about it being three rounds instead of five rounds? I think five rounds definitely benefits Marab because I think Marab just nonstop. A hundred percent. Yeah, you're three right. Three rounds, you can't let you can't let Henry, you know, get up on anything with the wrestling. You know what I'm saying? But Marab's a hard guy to hold down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hard guy to pin down. Plus, does Marab stop moving? I mean, it, it wears on you in later rounds, but he, he he doesn't. It's not like he starts slow. Like, you know, Cheeto Vera is known to start a little slow. Marab is not. I mean, Marab just kind of comes out like a fucking, like when a horse runs out of a gate. Like, that's how Marab moves. So I, I, I would prefer this be five rounds, though. I think it should be five rounds because it's a co-main. But, you know, either way, I think he he's, he's not going to get tired. I want to talk about his uh, Instagram, like, uh, posts. Marab's. I have not seen them. Why don't you look at the latest one? Why don't you put it on for us? Uh, Jake the Mighty Ginger. Jake the Mighty Ginger. Could you please put on his latest one where he starts the day, he's brushing his teeth. He uh, he opens up his garage door. He, he does a little jog. He's racing a car a little bit at a stop at a uh, intersection. <laughs> and then you see him uh, 
He goes to a gas station, takes the nozzle out, show him fill up his cup, drinks that fucking thing. You know, here we go. Hey, watch, watch. Why am I saying? Look, watch, 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 Jimmy. Okay. Watch this. Everybody. Yes. Watch. Oh, Maria, Maria Rob's into it. Go ahead. What is he doing? What are you telling Putting me? Hey, he's doing these. Yeah, You're going to like this. Watch. Hey, now he's racing a car. <laughs> now he's going to the Institute. Look, he's going to work out. No, look at this. Watch this part. That's very funny. Ready? Ready? Hey, you're like Benny yes. Hill. You're gonna fucking get the girl. Come on, man. The machine. Yeah, the wow. Machine. Very well shot. The machine. I like that. He's funny. He's funny. Yes. <laughs> and I'm glad he gets this. Uh, again, he's the guy, and we've talked about this, Matt. He's like so many guys where they have to wait for their shot the way Leon did. It's a yeah. part about being a nice guy. And I know he didn't want to fight Aljamain. Aljamain didn't want to fight him. He's just so close. But even if it wasn't Aljo, I think Marab would have had to wait because he's a nice guy. He's not a shit talker. Um, and he's a nightmare to deal with. And nobody wants to fucking fight this guy. Nobody. Um, Listen, it is an exciting matchup, though. With, very exciting. With, so. It is. It is. Because he might be cringy and say whatever things he says, uh, Shahudo. Uh, but, you know, he is a very, very uh, strong competitor. Game know? opponent? Yes, oh. a very good fighter. Game sure. opponent? Yeah, he's not laying down for nobody. You know? No. How he did... Uh, oh, Henry, I, I get... Do you think I'm sorry, Matt? God. No, I'm just saying. He's, I believe he says he doesn't bend the knee, I, unless I just made that up. I'm pretty sure he says that. Well, he yeah, don't bend the knee. Yeah, um, I mean, a lot of guys. I bend the knee to talk to him. Not bend the knee to talk to him. I can do short jokes because I'm short. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Yeah. Hi. Um, Jimmy, do you ever think? Sure. That, like, being a stand-up, that you just get you know, like. Did you ever, is writer's block a real thing? And if so, yes. how long did you ever suffer from it? Or did so, far, you? so far, 33 years. <laughs> yeah, I know. That was a layup for you. But um, seriously, seriously. You know, it, it, you go through it a lot. I'm kind of having that now, actually, where I'm oh, happy yeah. with my hour. And I keep thinking, but I don't force it. Like, I try to go on and talk about something. And then I'll just, I keep kind of bumping into a wall, like trying to expand. And then all of a sudden the door will crack and I'll just start talking about something a little more and a little more, like I'm doing a bit about cheating. Um, and it, I just kind of start, but now it's like really, all right, it's a good 10 minute piece or eight minute piece. That's how I work through writer's block. Some guys are good at sitting there and just making themselves do it. Is it refreshing for your, for your material, for your writing? Um, like does it give you more material now at this stage of your life that you're, in a whole new stage of your life being married. Not that you're going to be like, oh, take my wife, please, all that type of shit. But I'm saying, for instance, Seinfeld does things, I believe he does things talking about kids and stuff. Right? The writer wrote, doesn't he? Yeah, do I'm sure he does. Family humor. Like, uh, do you find like you're getting new ideas just doing the whole married thing? I know you're doing the, the, the show on YouTube with your wife, but right? do you find yourself like, opening up the different type of humor with that with your wife or no? Yes. I, you know, because it's just your, I've always talked about my own life. Like, um, you get like, a, like George Carlin, who's a genius observer. Like, you know what I mean? I, I always com thought it, compared him to like a gargoyle on top of a building, just kind of looking down on everything and just fucking firing. And I talk more about my life. So now that I'm living a different way, you talk more about that. Like, it's just, it is what it is. Um, talking about my wife and our experience together, it's, there's a lot there. How was that cruise? You went on that that cruise. Was it? It was Bert, it was Bert's cruise. Bert, uh, our, yeah, it's funny. Our new YouTube video is, is about fifteen minutes on Bert's cruise. It was good, dude. I I'm not a big cruise person. Dude, I, I worked on the ship, and uh, four days was more than enough. I'd probably never go on another cruise because I don't like being trapped on a boat. I don't like being trapped on transportation. I don't like that shit either, man. No, but right? I enjoyed I enjoyed Bert and the comedians. I love the gig, but if it wasn't for Bert and the people, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. Yeah, I can't see me doing a cruise ever. You know, that's not my cup of tea, dude. What the fuck? Why? Then you go, oh, let's go by the pool while we're floating in the ocean. Like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Let's go to a buffet while we're floating in the middle of the fucking Pacific. I don't know. And then the problem is the weather. Like, we had bad weather one day or two days. So we only docked in Nassau for like, a, you know, one day. And then the rest of the time we were just at sea. 
So like you're a slave to the weather too. Cause if you have shitty weather, you're going to get knocked around. You're not going to go where you're supposed to go. Um, do we have a guest? Yes, we do. The machine, the machine. That's, the machine. that's Bert Kreischer's nickname as well. That's true. much different that's physical true. condition wow. than, uh, uh, Marab. It's true. Well, let's get Marab. Yes. Let's bring uh, the great Marab. Rob, the machine. How are you guys? Very oh, good. Where are you headed? Trying. Where are you headed right now? Jim, Jim. Now, is, is that are you headed to the syndicate or are you headed to the PI? Yes. yes uh, you know, syndicate first, and after I go PI and nighttime, I'm going to wrestling gym. I gotta prepare for Henry Sehudas. Yeah. Now, this is a huge fight, a big name um, um, fight. And obviously, you've seen Al Jermain fight him. Um, did you pick out a lot from what the way Al Jermain beat him? Uh, did you see weaknesses? Obviously, you're not going to tell us what they were. But what, what did you, uh, in, a, in, a, in a very broad way, learn from watching that Aljo fight? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Uh... I don't see any weaknesses when Aljo falls handy because I trained with Aljo and I know how strong Aljo is. And it worked against Aljo. It was a uh, um, very competitive round, very close round. And uh, Aljo did win against him, but Henry did good job. It's, um, it's going to be a challenge for me to fight Henry uh, because um, Henry is a good wrestler and he's a good striker. And it's going to be hard to take him down and uh, keep a strike with him. But I know, I believe myself, I can beat him. And uh, I don't see any weakness. Uh, and I respect him. I know he's he's a good fighter. And it's going to be hard fight for me. Uh, I'm only focused for win. And that's what I'm going to do February 17th. Hold on, it froze. Uh, oh, you froze up a little good bit. now? Yeah, that's... Well, yeah. Marab, with, yes. all, with all due respect, man, fuck that guy. Fuck <laughs> that guy, Marab. You're, gonna, <laughs> you're so respectful. Listen, he's got good wrestling. He's very game. He's got the problem. He's fighting you. What is he yes. going to do? What is he going to hold you down? You, you're a fucking hard guy to hold down. Exactly, man. Well, what is he going to do? Beat you up standing? Nobody <laughs> plans. This is not the wrestling for the Olympics. This ain't wrestling. This ain't a wrestling match. Nobody, nobody puts it together, the feet to the floor, like Marab does. Nobody does it. I don't give a shit if he has a gold medal. That's what I'm saying. What is he, what is he going to do to you is my question to you. Jimmy, what's he going to do to him? I mean, he's going to try to take Marab down, and if he does yeah, succeed, he, Marab will get back up. That's the way that's I see it. Pretty, that's pretty fucking tiring. Yeah. Let's test who's got a better gas tank. My money's on Marab. Let's go, Marab. mate. I appreciate it. Thank oh, you. No. Yes, yes. That's that's also giving me confidence. I know that. Whatever you just tell me, I know that. Um, but, you know, I hear from you. It gives me more confidence, and I'm just going to focus on me and I'm just going to do me, you know, I'm just going to pressure, punch, take down, whatever. If even he takes me down, I'm going to get up and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> now, would you, Matt mentioned before you came on that it would be great if this was a five round fight even. Did you care if it was a three or five round fight or did you, did you have no preference or what were you looking for? Yes. Uh, like Matt says, the five round fight will be good, and uh, I'm still waiting. I asked my manager uh, if if they can change to five round, if they can ask UFC to change five round fights if it's possible. Yeah, I prepare five round fights because I, I always training and sparring um, more than five rounds, and I know I don't have this problem. Uh, like I'm and. Uh, 
I'm more comfortable five round fights, you know, like everybody see like right. last my fight, you know, I, you know, I have cardio, good cardio and then I can just, uh, I, I will, I will open more actually, you know, after three rounds and I, I, I will be more warm up and, um, I will do more, 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 more good stuff after three rounds. So, but let's see, even if it's three rounds, I mean, uh, whatever it is, I'm just going to fight hard and, yeah. What what did you think of uh what do you think of O'Malley and Cheeto um coming up as 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 uh Sean's first defense? Uh, um, I was supposed to fight O'Malley uh, because as a number one contender but yeah now he's fighting number 6 Cheeto Vera. And I understand for company maybe it's it's better or and maybe stylistically, it's, I think stylistically it's a good matchup for O'Malley, but I'm still not sure who's gonna win this fight. Uh, I think O'Malley will win, but Chito has also chance. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a good fight, and uh, I'll, I will be there, I will watch, and uh, after I will win against Henry Serhudo, I'm sure I'm gonna fight winner of winner of this fight. Can't yeah, you do. Yeah, you deserve it. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. I, I brought up to Jimmy earlier, Marab. Yeah. I love, we love your sense of humor. I love your sense of humor. I can't talk for Jimmy, but I think he does also. Yes. Tell me about your video. Your, your, I, I've been watching your Instagram. <laughs> I love when you're the last <laughs> day you wake up, you brush your teeth, you go for a jog, you drink some gasoline. <laughs> You see a pretty girl, you jump, you're carrying a... Who's coming up with that? Is that you? Are you coming <laughs> up with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my friends told me you should make... Uh, you should make, uh, like, you make, like, make up, like, a uh, one-day video, like, one lifestyle video. And then I started joking, laughing, like, yes. oh, you want to be me? <laughs> Just running, like, you know, I'm drinking, like... Uh, Gasser, I, I said joke. Oh, actually, maybe we should do something, you know. And then, yeah, uh, yeah like some it came together, and then yeah, we was, we was joking first with my friends, and uh, and then yeah, we we just did it. Yeah. It's funny. It's very funny. I like it a lot. I Thank like you. That. You got you. You to do more shit like that, Marab. I yes. know you're a funny guy. I want the world to know how funny you are. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Actually, I'm going to post today. I, <laughs> I'm like, I like this positive and um, yeah, I'm going to post more, more like more, more. I'm going to create uh, more video like that. And I'm going to, gonna... how much time are you spending in Vegas now? Are you out there full time? Yeah, it's uh, easier. More, more time I'm here, you know, because like uh, less, less cold, like New York, we know it's prison and uh, here it's warm and UFCPI. And sometimes we have a little injuries and uh, here UFCPI, it's um, uh, when, you know, like physical therapies and so much is and the training partners, you know, like I have a lot of, a lot of like small guys, like the, the UFC fighters and I'm more comfortable when I fight like high level guys, like training, sparring with them. It's uh, it's good and uh, and I buy house here two years ago and then it's a it's a good beautiful house and very comfortable and uh, and uh, it's like no traffic here and uh, it's it's you close like to me. Las Vegas you enjoying it you're living the dream Marab. Yeah. you have a nice house you in your garage you have a nice little <laughs> training area right yeah. yes yes you, you are living. Think about how many years ago you were doing the construction yes. and you were still kicking ass, but you were, he was doing long days of fucking breaking down houses and carrying yeah. concrete. Dude, you deserve yeah. to live like this, my man. You deserve it. Thank you, man, for everything. Yeah, you know, you know, like we're coming from a long way, but yeah, exactly. Like right now, I live in my dream and life is good and but I'm still I'm still trying to work hard and just uh, yeah build gym in my garage just in because just in case in holidays you know, you, gyms always close and I yeah. I always bring guys hey come in right. my garage. it's great 
Yes. Oh, you don't you don't take a week off for the holidays? No, no, we can't. I mean, I don't know what Henry Hill was doing, and I know he's. I mean, he was already Olympic champion when I started training. So, <laughs> so you know, just my mentality. You know, I always uh, respect my opponents, and I. Yeah, I'm sure my, I mean, I'm sure Henry Sehudo's training now and I, I cannot take days off. And uh, just for my my mentally, when I training every day, I feel very comfortable. And uh, sometimes when I take day off, let's say Sunday, I take off and it's hard to sleep, you know, because every day I used to train hard and I have to work out, I have to do something to sleep good. So like even physically, my body, body is to it, working hard. And uh, yeah, I have to do something, work hard. And uh, this way I feel mentally relaxed and physically tired and I can go sleep. So you basically have energy every day and you're like a balloon. You have to squeeze every bit of energy out so you can go back to bed. And you, and you get that through, through, through training and through running. But if you don't do that, you're still filled with all that energy. Yes, yes. Exactly like you said, if, if I don't, I don't, if I don't work out, if I'm not get tired, and when I go bed and I sleep, not doesn't coming because I have a lot of energy and I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have to like, I don't know. Yeah, my my sleep will be mess. You know, if if I don't, I don't work out every day. Do you go to shows or anything on the strip? Uh, how far are you from the actual strip in Vegas? <clears throat> I fourteen minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, sometimes I go, but I, I enjoy my lifestyle, like training, and I have a good good friends, uh, like uh, and more MMA, more, more MMA friends. That I, I hang out with them, and uh, you know, I, I try every day, like training two, two times a day, and um, and uh, I, I, I like I like this lifestyle, you know. I, and sometimes, yeah, I do go shows. There is so many things going on in Vegas, but I'm I'm enjoy like oh, training and uh, just watching MMA news and uh, watching my friends Instagram how they work out, how lifestyle goes. Even watch you guys some uh, episodes or some. You no, know, I, I have fun with this. You know, like this is this is fun. This is interesting for me, and um, I don't have to do anything extra crazy like something. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I love MMA and I, I want to know more, more, more things and how other other professional fighters doing things. And uh, I'm, that's what I'm usually when I have a free time, I watching podcasts or I listen to interviews and uh, I talk my family and uh, yeah, like this. Can I, can I point something out here? Marab, how long have you been in the UFC now? How long? It's more than uh, six years. Um, remember when uh, when when I win uh, the Ringo Combat title, 2017, uh, and I I fight 2017 December uh, in first time UFC. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's a long time. Now, yeah. in that time, you have only two losses. Now, if you look at those losses, uh, let me let me just get this out, yeah. Frankie. Frankie Sainez, I, I'm, I'm killing his last name. Yes. Times. Signs, yeah. Clearly, Marab won that fight. Even when he was getting over, he had the flu and shot. I don't give a fuck. He won that fight. And the Ricky Simone, obviously, that was that was controversy. And Very fight, big. He would have won. He could easily, we could be talking right now on his record. It should easily, it could be an undefeated fighter in the UFC. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. For the people that are listening to this, and you just see the W's and the L's. You see two L's. Look into those L's. He could easily be undefeated. So when you're thinking you're talking about Henry Shahuda, oh, he's an Olympic this, this and that, we could be talking to a guy that's been in the UFC for how long as Marab has been with, with no losses, if you look into those losses. I'm just saying. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> it is what it is. You're yeah. Listen. Marab's never going to toot his own horn. I got to. No, I know. I, I'm pointing out, you know, look into it, you know. But anyway, Marab. I'm yeah, sorry you, you deserve butt. the belt, uh, a shot at the belt, Marab. You deserve it. Um, you know, you have deserved it for quite a while. I, I think it would have been. I get why they want to rematch <clears throat> Marlon with uh, Sean because they have that history. 
Yes. Uh, and again, I've told Matt too, because you're you're in the Leon Edwards space where everyone deals with you only when they have to, because you're a very nice guy. You don't talk a lot of shit and you're a nightmare. Like nobody wants to, to fight you. Like people fight you when they finally have to fight you. So I guess it's a great compliment uh, that no one is looking forward to signing uh, to have to deal with you. But that's why you haven't gotten that shot yet, because you're a nice guy. And if they can avoid you, they avoid you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. One more. One more. Like we have one more challenge, and uh, after this, I think, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, everything will be. Um, I mean, everything will be how it has to be. You know, I think one more fight, and and then I will fight um, champion after. Take out oh. Shahudo, you cannot be denied. You yes. Cannot be denied. Yes. All right, Marab. We know you're going to train. Um, we're glad you came on. But last question, Marab. You fought, I think, once in uh, 22 and once in 23. Uh, in, a, in a perfect world, how many fights would you look to have this year? Uh, perfect world. Three fights will be good mm -hmm. because, like, now I'm fighting February. I can fight um, uh, summer. But full time, you know, I would love to. I would love to be busy, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I would love to fight at least three fights in one year, and uh, now it's gonna be good because I'm fighting in February, like beginning of year, and um, yeah, I just want to be busy, and I I love enjoying training. I training every day. It doesn't matter what, you know, like even I'm, I'm injured or where I'm going, even I'm in vacation, I'm always running and I'm always trying to work out. I'm always lifting or something, even if I cannot do grappling and wrestling. And um, then I'm always trying to be in shape. Like you, I tell you guys, like I cannot even sleep if I don't spend my energy. So, and uh, yeah, uh, and let's see. All right, buddy. Okay. What? We'll talk to you soon and uh, stop drinking gasoline and uh, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. We'll talk to you soon, Marav. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, Matt, for having me. And have a good day. And I appreciate it. All right. Have a good one, buddy. Good talking right, to you. Marab. Yeah, of course. Bye. And we have Tim Elliott shortly. He's not, I don't think he's in the waiting room yet, but he'll be here uh, momentarily. Such a nice guy, Marab. He's just, uh, you know, how can anybody, you can't, you can't not like him. It's Instagram. It's funny. Yeah, it is. Um, and I'm also enjoying, uh, I'm looking forward to talking to Tim Elliott. There was a short notice fight he took, I think on 10 days uh, against Sumodarji uh, in December. Very, very impressive. And it is. It's big. That's big for him. You know, it's a big win. You know, and um, he's always exciting, Tim. That's the yeah. one thing that, he's one of those, I don't want to just say grappling based because he's very good with the striking, but his grappling and his styles, it's, 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 it stands out. You know, it's, un, it, it's a, it's kind of all over the place. Isn't it? Wait, hold on. Who would you compare his style to? Like, he's so interesting to watch because the way he moves. Like, Dominic Cruz has very strange movements or, like, hard yeah. to figure out. Who, who would you compare him to? It's funny. No, no. Well, um, I, he's he's kind of an original. He just feels, yeah. like, it says awkward MMA. Is that his, that's why I yeah. was thinking about that. That's his Instagram, is awkward MMA. Because he's a little awkward. Like, he has, like, um, his movements got to be hard to – to mimic when you're getting ready for a fight to get training partners to really do what he does, you know, it's yeah. not like Marab like that. Marab's like, Marab puts things together. Like I said, I see Marab go with guys straight wrestling that could be better than him with wrestling. But then when they sparred with them, he'd be getting them down. So he blends it together. Like no one, he really, he's so he's really, he's great at the uh, strike to take down. And how much does that, I mean, again, Sudo has cardio, of course. These all these guys do, but how how frustrating is it to deal with a guy who comes into the second and the third exactly the same energy level as they started in the first? I mean, that, that this that's got to be a shit uh, thing to have to deal with when you're fighting. Listen, a lot of everybody, you know, starts strong. Sure, you're gonna stay strong over the uh, the course of the uh, how many rounds you got to fight. So right. That's that's what's that's what you got to work on. Every you gotta you gotta expect to feel that in the beginning, you know who's gonna fade first. So, 
you know, shooting takedowns, holding a guy down, the guy gets back up. That's fucking exhausting. You got to make a guy work, you yeah. know. Cejudo goes out there, gets a takedown early, looks to stall, whatever. Uh, yeah. You like my point? So I do like your point. All right, Jimmy. Oh, it looks like we have our next guest. Tim Elliott, yeah. Be in uh, shortly. All right. Yeah, Jimmy. Yes. I'm watching um, Reacher on Prime. You ever watch Reacher? No. Wasn't that the movie with Tom Sorry. Cruise played Jack was, Reacher? Oh, there's yeah, Tim Elliott. It was, but it's also, I'm going to ask Tim Elliott. Hi, Tim Elliott. Hey, Tim. Hey, how's it going, man? How Thanks are you? Guys. Tim, do you ever watch the show Reacher with, uh, I don't know, Reacher? I did on Amazon. Yeah, yeah, Prime. Yeah. It's pretty good, no? Yeah, he headbutts a lot of guys. I like that. He, he does. He elbows <laughs> them. The fight scenes are pretty cool. Yeah, you know. Sometimes they got the girls doing a little like, ah, like grabbing a guy's wrist, which is really silly. But well, when that guy grabs somebody and throws them and they go flying, it's believable because he's a giant. He is. He's a big dude, man. There was a rumor. I'm about to get geeky here. That they said that he wanted to play Batman, but he's too big to play Batman, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Jimmy, am I embarrassing you? In front no, of not at all. I don't know who, who what's his name? Alan Richardson. And yeah, I have no I have no idea who he is. He's from Reacher, man. No, I know. I don't watch it though. You know, man, I don't watch a lot. Hey, had fighting scenes in TV and movies, uh, since MMA is such a prevalent thing in the country, have they gotten any better or more realistic? Like, are guys actually having professionals show them how to make certain moves, or are they just as awful as they always were? Take it, Tim. I, man, I don't know. Like, I I was always a Van Damme fan, so that was one of the reasons I got into fighting. So, uh, I don't know. I try to base a lot of my stuff off of what they do in movies, so it's hard for me to, to really judge that. Uh, I don't know. I've it's hard to say what'll work in a fight and what won't. You don't really know until you get in there. So, yeah. You know what's cool though when they do use real techniques because <laughs> I was while I was playing my VR, I could still like look out of the my the, the bottom of it. So I'm playing. It was Sunday at the Sarah household at everybody's household yesterday. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was a lazy Sunday yesterday, so we're all playing my VR and my wife and my my teenage daughter are doing a John Wick marathon was marathon, which is pretty cool. So they're yeah. on the second one, and I was just thinking about this. You brought up the fight scenes, some fucking really nice jujitsu. Shout out to the Machado brothers. Pretty sure it was Higgin Machado that worked with K Kanua Reeves. Can I Keanu, yeah, Keanu. Because he was doing modified clock chokes. He had a guy in a triangle. I'm like, oh, and then he shoots the guy in the fucking face with the triangle. <laughs> I know. I guess he. I guess he doesn't have to grab his ankle, Tim. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but he got a gun, I guess. It was so cool. It reminds me of ages ago. When I when I first heard about jujitsu, and like, oh my goodness, they were using it in lethal weapon. But um, Mel, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, yeah. Versus yeah. Gary Busey, and then I I found <laughs> out that it was the uh, Horian Gracie and Hoist. They did the 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 fight, the fight work in that show, in that movie. You know, the fight. I, I, what, what's well, the word? With the chore scene? Choreography. I can't yeah. pronounce it, Tim. I can't. I'm I'm sorry to say that choreography. It's not How did he finish him in that? Does anybody remember? Triangle. What was, the, it was a triangle. Yeah. Well, he actually finished him with a gun. Him and yeah, him and Danny Glover. Yeah, Danny Glover. But he did have him in a triangle. Yeah. Which I thought was fucking cool. You know? Anyway. Now, Tim, you, uh, it's funny. I, I, I don't cook. I can't cook. For, the only thing I've ever done was, and I don't remember how it came to be, but Gordon Ramsay had me make his eggs and post the video. I made Gordon Ramsay scrambled eggs. No and way. they were actually really good. But that's the only time I've ever actually cooked. And you, what is your relationship with him like? And how did it start? Man, I wouldn't really call it a relationship. It was weird. Uh, years ago, when I think when I first got into the UFC, it had to be 2012 or 2013. They had a, a UFC fighter summit where they would bring all the fighters into a nice hotel. I think this one was at, at Red Rocks. And, uh, you know, they brought in every contracted fighter. And we were just in Vegas for that. And I tweeted something about his restaurant, like saying the food was good. But I talked shit about the chairs because everybody like set up at the table and it was a bunch of flyweights. And like 
the tables came up to our chest. So <laughs> we felt like smaller people than what we, you know, what we are. So I, I just tweeted something about it. And then, uh, he tweeted back that he would take care of it. And then the next time I went in there, all the chairs were different. So that was a long, long time ago. And then, uh, one of my ex's brother was dating a girl that worked on uh, hell's kitchen with him. And she was like, Oh, Gordon Ramsay's a fan of yours. And I was watching when I'm cutting weights, uh, hotel hell is my favorite one. Like he, he's like kind of an asshole to the guys. And I, I don't know. It's by far the best one in my opinion. Um, but he, uh, he was already following me on Instagram whenever she told me that. So then I started messaging him and I always tell him I have two tickets for him at, at every event. But I mean, the guy's on TV fucking every yeah. day. So he usually just says, Oh, sorry, I'm in this part of the country, but I'll be rooting you on or whatever. Some stupid shit like that. Have, now, do you cook? Do you actually like to cook? Cause I'm thinking if fighters who cook, it's gotta be such an advantage to be able to make what you really want healthy. Uh, it's very hard to eat healthy and keep it interesting. I don't really like to, but I do. I also have a daughter, but man, I make it easy. I have a Instapot and an air fryer, like, and I can do everything with that. And my, my daughter's really easy. She don't need a ton of meat, but, uh, vegetables and fruits are no problem to get her to eat. So, uh, you know, Instapot and air fryer, if you don't know how to cook or don't like to cook, that's what I do. We, we got day, I used to have a George Foreman grill. Yes. And I used to put just like turkey meat with nothing on it, man. It was so dry as shit. <laughs> I don't know. Thank God my wife could cook. I suck at cooking. Yeah, Sorry, guys, I'm basically just talking out loud about me not being able. Well, to does cook. the air fryer work? Because we, I got one for Christmas, like well over a year ago, and I haven't used it. Um, but it, it, does it actually make food taste like it's fried? It's actually worth doing. It's the best, man. I I feel like I should have a job for whatever air fryer. I mean, there are always different ones, but I pretty much buy one every time I go to Vegas because I cook my own food during camp. But uh, I should I should work for them on the sales team. I've uh, so many people I've sold the air fryer to, and them tell me like, "Oh man, I love it," and uh, it's just easy. So for like, it makes food that you put in the microwave actually tastes good. Like I don't like microwave foods because I think it's a microwave though. Like a mech microwave burrito thawed out and then put in the air fryer is, is amazing. It's it uh, it changes everything. Yeah, maybe I'll start using it. It's just kind of sitting there like a decoration. Uh, I, it was a good friend that gave it to me. So I was like, I can't get rid of it, but I can't cook. And my wife doesn't feel like learning it. But um, so you it don't take up counter space, though. A lot of it. Yeah, it's fucking huge. But again, I, it, here's a problem, Tim. As I've gotten older, I've gotten man tits and side fat. So I, I have to sacrifice the counter space to be yeah. able to eat a little bit healthier. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hey, hey I, Tim, when you're not. You're not fighting. I know you spend a, so much, a lot of time with your daughter, obviously. What, what are some things you like to do? Whether it's a, a movie you've seen or a, 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 a series you're watching, books you're either reading or listening to, that counts. Yeah. Tell me. Anything? Man, uh, I do a lot of, like, eight-year-old kid stuff. I'm, uh, I like to be uh, – well, now I'm doing my camps away from my daughter, so – I was going to leave today actually to head back to Texas, but it started snowing. So I'm not going to drive in the snow, but uh, so that'll give me a few more days with my kid. But man, I do a lot of kids stuff. Like she's into gymnastics and she does some jujitsu. Uh, she does flag football, and softball, soccer. So whatever she's into, um, that's kind of what I try to be into. Even if I'm not a fan of it, we were doing soccer drills and stuff like that, but I like to hunt and fish and, play with guns and shoot and, you know, do that kind of shit. Uh, prepare for the uh, apocalypse that's <laughs> coming. Uh, oh, you're ready. Yeah. Well, no, I don't know if I'm ready, but that was just that's something we always screwed around with as kids. And I always kind of kept that as an adult. I still clean my guns, even though they don't get used because I store ammo now instead of shooting it. Used to have a bunch of ammo. It was easy to shoot and find. Uh, now, not so much. Just in case. You want to be ready. Now, let me ask you, have you ever gone camping alone? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd call it camping. I've, uh, I've definitely spent a few nights outside. Um, but no, I mean, I, especially now I have a kid. If I'm going camping, she's coming with me. How old is she? She's eight. Oh, okay. Do you dislike soccer? I hate it. In high school, I hated it. I can't watch it. I like watching her play because it's a bunch of eight-year-old girls running into each other. So, you know, that's funny. Uh, but it, she's really fast, so that helps. But boy, she, you know, hand-eye coordination is not her strong suit. But 
she could run outrun everybody and run into kids and then you know she does she's like that person on the team that's cute i feel like as long as they're doing something something they enjoy you know she likes to do things that's her thing it doesn't she's not like crazy about any one thing but like she wants to have something to do and you know she she's a great kid man she's so easy she plays by herself she eats great she's kind and polite like she'll smart ass me because she knows i'm not going to do anything to her but yeah. like if anybody else tells her to do anything she's on it you know she'll tell me go fuck myself but she knows i'm not going to i'm on her side no matter what but she knows that yeah she's uh she's she's just i don't ever have to tell her really to do anything she's just good it's nice when you're away at least you got the FaceTime and stuff like that you know you can zoom and you know that's we, important and that's she can do all that better than i can so yeah. All the technology. Yeah. Isn't it weird? Like this generation and maybe the ones who are a little older, like they grew up every minute of their life. They're on camera because they're communicating with people. They're on Instagram. It's like they're aware of a public persona every minute of their life. Like, whereas you and I had choices growing up and, and like for them, it's like, I'm going to be public and every single minute they know is a public moment to some extent. It's wild. That's, I mean, I don't, I think I had a pager at one point in middle school and high school. So I couldn't relate really. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It, it is crazy to think that there's a, like, the, it's, there's a lot of pressure where you know that, uh, you know, like you're so used to communicating publicly. Uh, it's like, there's so many ways to make mistakes. I, I think there's a lot of pressure with that, man. I'm glad I got to be a fucking idiot until I was at like 30 before any of that yeah. stuff came along. Before everybody had a camera in their pocket. Yeah, it's wild that Tim could live off the land. I'd be like that, that half a hippie in that movie when when we were wild or whatever the fuck it was, where he fucking killed the bear and it went. You no, know, he killed he killed the fucking elk. He killed something and then the meat went bad and then he died. He ate a wrong berry and he died in the bus. True story. Yeah, and that would be me. You know, I'd be eating the wrong berries. I I kill something. There's no microwave for me. I'm like ah, I, I'd have some. I'd have a hard time, Tim. I look for a guy like you and be like, hey, dude, I'll help you, dude. I'll be the muscle. Let's get some bitches in line, man. But you, you know, you cook it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm good at any of that. I, I just, I would like to be better. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Pretty much everything I'm doing now is like to try to, to be a better dad. And, you know, yeah. even being a better fighter has got put on the back burner a little bit. But then, you know, now I just got a contract and a raise. It's back to like, now it's going to be better for my daughter if I go back to camp. So. Now we're going back to camp. How many fights? They gave me four, and then I just fought one of one of that. So three left, on a, they, and they gave me a raise and a bonus. That's nice. What did you have? Ten days for Sumadarji? No, I went. So I went to Texas and trained for two days, and they called me that Monday night and asked if I could fight in February. I said yes, and they said, "Well, what about December 10th? And I was like. Yeah, and then they were like, what about, or whatever day, and then they were like, what about this weekend? I said yes to all three, and I think that's the reason why I got the raise, And because it was all for Sue. It would have been, you know, I'm, they were saying, like, Sue doesn't want to make weight twice in two weeks. And I don't blame them. Plus, they gave us 135, so it was good. It was one of those times where I helped them out, and it really worked out in my favor. It, it doesn't always work that way. Yeah, it's it's a risk. Guys have taken short notice fights and wind up hurting themselves, or you know, it is or is a risk. But well, and it sucked for Sue because I've been on the other position of that. They kind of forced him into a fight. It wasn't the he had. It wasn't his fault that uh, that that dude pulled out. That Nascimento pulled out. So Sue did everything right. Was there, ready to fight. Was ready to make weight. His opponent pulled out. They gave him a new opponent. They forced him. To, you know, they, you backed into a corner at that point. Like they want you to fight. And if you don't fight, then, you know, it doesn't look good on you. So I've been on the other side of that, too, where I was forced into a fight that I didn't necessarily want to take because my opponent got hurt or something. So I felt uh, some sympathy towards Sue as well, because I know what it's like for me. Everything worked out perfect. But for him, like everything went wrong and, you know, and it wasn't his fault. Well, imagine you have to do a last minute game plan for Tim Elliott. You're like, ah, uh. Dude, that Rubik's Cube of a fighter, that's going to be rough, man, because it's like, yo, not only is not, I'm not saying this in a, in a, I'm not saying you're not normal, but not only if you do a kind of a regular fighter who has a, he's got such a, a style 
that it's, you know, you you know, you know say yourself, awkward MMA. I'm telling you, man, you got that herky jerky and you're shooting your, it's a style like all to your own, man. Like, and that's a compliment. So that's a hard guy to get ready for if you give you if you give yourself an eight week camp. If you got to do that in like ten days, whatever it was, that's crazy. That's that's rough, man. It's a tall order. Yeah, and I mean, the guy he was fighting was a jujitsu guy through and through. So like, the game plan was easy: keep it standing and beat him up on the feet. Like that's to go from fighting a jujitsu guy to fighting a wrestler is you know that sucks in itself. And they had their whole camp was kind of that way. Uh, Josh Emmett had a quick change round fight with uh, Bryce Mitchell. So Team Alpha Male had two fights like that back to back with Suma Darji's guy getting hurt and then Bryce Mitchell stepping in. You uh, Your style, like Matt, it's so hard to deal with for guys. It's, imp- it's really hard to train for because there's so few guys that move like you. Is that just the natural way you've always fought or is there something you were doing where you're like, this? I, I don't want to be predictable and you consciously made an effort to make it so different? Uh, man, I kind of had a different style at first and I would go to gyms and they would, they would tell me like, hey man, like you got to do this and like be more traditional. Like they, they wouldn't tell me like everything I was doing was not traditional. So like all the coaches were like, Oh, don't do that. And then, uh, the first time I trained with uh, James Krause's coach, uh, at the time, Brian Davison and, uh, James, uh, his coach was like, Hey man, if you're going to do this and this, like you also have to do this and this, like in order to not get kicked in the head. So he didn't tell me anything I was doing was wrong. He was just trying to add to, uh, what I was already doing. So, at that point, I started to, to change and, and just do my own thing and have fun because, like, there's no wrong way to punch somebody in the face. Like, it, it, it all hurts getting hit in the nose. So, you know, it may not be technically right as far as boxing goes, but we're not boxing. Right. And it's also, look, it, it, he, there, so basically it was just kind of showing you, hey, you're leaving yourself open to A, B, and C by doing this. So let, instead of changing everything you're doing, let's just fix A, B, and C and how you protect yourself. Right. Exactly. Hey, Tim, now, listen new contract it's going great so far with it many years from now when you do walk away from the cage what do you plan on doing do you have any uh any plans for that and i was hoping to have like uh i have a couple properties right now but hopefully i have enough real estate to where i can just live on my own farm and have animals and vegetables and you know i just want to live a quiet life alone <laughs> nice that's nice. Yeah. Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. I get crazy alone though. I, I'm not good by myself. Well, I don't mean alone alone. I just, you know, I don't need a I don't need much. I just I want to have my space and you know, I don't I don't have that yet. And uh, ideally with the you know things keep going right with the UFC, I'll have enough money where I can sustain that. The goal is just have a little farm and and retire. I've never done anything else. I went to school for years and then got two degrees. And then went straight into fighting. I've never had, a, I've never worked a regular job or anything. If I could go my whole life and keep saying that, like that's uh, that's a big goal of mine. So that's a win. Yeah. What are the degrees in? Uh, I have a bachelor's in science and general studies, and a bachelor's in environmental industrial health and safety, like OSHA training. Is that going to help you in farming, or is that totally different? No. And even if I wanted a job in any of that, I would have to go back to school. It's all certification based. But I'd like eight years of college and I'm not a doctor. Wow. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, why would you think the ocean training has nothing to do with the farm? No, he said OSHA. I didn't oh, know if that was the same thing. It did sound like water though, but I'm like, hey, you didn't say ocean. What'd you say? OSHA. Like, uh, like con- construction safety type stuff. Oh shit. Oh, now I sound like the idiot. No, 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 Matt. Cause I thought it was ocean based too. I oh, didn't know sorry. exactly what OSHA was. I'm a fucking idiot too. Yeah, we both are off. The guy yeah. was Scuba Steve. I'm well, a high school I dropout. Can, I can hardly swim. Yeah, I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm from Kansas. There's no oceans. There's hardly any lakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, surrounded by land. If you get swimming, dude, you could fight. Let me tell you, Tim Elliott, with your style, a lot of guys they, they have to be knockout guys to be uh, fan favorites, like Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier. You are like a fan favorite, and it's and it's a grappling base, so it's pretty fucking. Not that you can't throw, but that that's 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 pretty cool. So, congrats on that. I always enjoy when you're on the card, yeah. Tim. Thank you, man. I've been lucky. I've I've had some really good coaches uh, in the past, and and right now in the present. So, I've always been really lucky in that sense that I've I've found a home with a good coach, and uh, that's pretty much where it comes from. Thank you. 
Yeah, well, Tim, look, look forward to you fighting again. Congrats on that win. That was such a great fight and a great win for you. And, and the new contract, that's awesome. That's really yeah, awesome. Man. So Thanks. I'm sure. That gives me a few more years in the game at least. Yeah, we'll see you soon, Tim, and I uh, can't wait to see you next fight. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, Take pal. Care, Be Tim. good. Jimmy, you know, yeah. I think about uh, what Tim just said when he said that uh, if he can go the rest of his life without – having a real job yeah you win jimmy ready winning yes winning look at me look at me yeah. don't no no don't be humble look at me take your glasses that you leave your glasses off i want to leave one why would i tell why would i tell you to take your glasses off why? i don't know because you want to spare me I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. You're just a me. You're a cruel. You're just a mean. You're a mean guy, Jimmy. No. Well, I think I look pretty good today. Why? You do look good. You look good. Spare you from looking at me. Very handsome. I'm saying <laughs> I talked about this with Longo. This best is I remember sitting on Longo was sitting on the on the on the ring and he's like, oh, I just wanna I just don't want this to end. And you know what? Never really did end. So when we were fighting, yeah, like we kept doing what we're doing. Like he's still doing it now at 65. Um now that I'm not fighting anymore, but I'm still teaching jujitsu. And I don't feel even though I taught two classes, I don't feel I really don't feel like it's a job. It is a job, but it's such a fun job. Yeah. I mean uh, sorry Jimmy I that Ruined everything. The bell. Oh, jumped. a little belt will happen. Don't you forgive yourself. So we're doing okay, Jimmy. We're winning in life, Jimmy. Yeah, we're winning in life. I just lost a friend, and he was enjoying his life. But you know, he had two years to retirement. I remember you saying that two years, and now he's not here no more. That's fucking. You know, we got to enjoy this short trip, Jimmy. <laughs> As, uh, who was it that said that on Letterman? He was a singer. He sings "Werewolves of London." You know, Eddie I, I, Murphy. No, not it's an excellent guess, but not Eddie Mur Eddie Murphy. I forget his name, but he was dying of cancer, and he was a big guest on Letterman. And he went on, and, and I think Letterman asked him, "What have you learned?" And he said, "Enjoy every sandwich. Just enjoy everything, like because you don't know when you're going to die. Just enjoy everything you do." It's true. It's true. It's not the point. I'm not a big sandwich guy. No, me neither, especially with the carbs and my man tits. But the point be basically was all that little stuff, just enjoy it because it's going to be done before you know it. You know what I like? I like a nice slice of pizza. When you hold it up, it doesn't, it doesn't fold. It just stays erect. <laughs> Stop it. Warren <laughs> Zevon, by the way. Yes, thank you very much, sorry? Jake. Sorry? Well, I'm sorry? No, Warren Zevon is the guy. I, I, oh. The singer, sorry, yeah. But you're right about the pizza. I do like it when it doesn't fold. A nice pizza with a heart on. Um, by the way, a couple of fights that were announced. Poirier against Benoit Saint-Denis. Again, four against 13. That's a huge numbers jump down for – and I love that Poirier has taken that fight. Um, yeah, so so that was – there was, there was another exciting, one that was an exciting fight. Very exciting, very exciting fight. fight. Yes, sir. Um, and there was one more. Did we mention – hold on. Where the – No, wait, I, I know it. I know it. I don't yes, know. I, I got it. You say – wait, hold on. The I next, won't say the, it. The next fight you're talking about? There's another one that was announced. Uh, it's really Charles exciting. Oliveira. Yep, for the number one contender it's, spot. It's oh, versus Armin Sukian. Armin Sukian. Yes. I didn't even look. I'm not. You saw yeah. me. See this? UFC 300. I won absolutely nothing. But your yeah. respect, Jimmy. That's a good fight. Ooh, that's Armin a good fight. Armin wanted that fight. You know that yeah. he wanted that fucking fight. Yeah. I mean, again, that's gonna be tough. I think that's a tough fight. Uh, that's a good fight. That's a hard fight. He's gonna. He will go to the floor. I feel with uh, Oliveira. Yeah, he will. I believe he will. That's an exciting fight. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. You know? Could Charles finish him on the floor? I mean, I I'm I am hard pressed to bet against Oliveira against anybody. I know he lost to Makachev like that, but it, it, he, Oliveira is so devastating. Um, so is Sarukian, but. I have a very hard time picking against Oliveira, no matter who he's fighting. Yeah. You've been watching anything new, Jimmy? No. Um, honestly, 
No, I've been so busy just trying to edit videos and stuff for my, my channel with my wife. Like I, I really love doing that. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on and just fun. stand up. Yeah, it's fun, man. It really is fun. A fun little project. Yeah, like I want to do it. I'm, it's not something I feel obligated to do. I just, I really want to do it and I have fun doing it. So yeah, that's about it. I haven't really watched. Oh, you know what I'm watching, Matt? But it's a documentary on that Natalia Grace, that Ukrainian dwarf that they said that they thought was older, but then was she, was she six or was she 22? It's a batshit crazy documentary. If you can watch it, watch it. There's, this is like season two of it. It's really interesting. I, I think about a dwarf girl. What's yeah yeah Natalia Grace the, the curious right. case of Natalia Grace I think it's called or the strange case. Listen, that's yes, something sir. if you want to watch it. All right, uh, I'm talking to you in a couple of days. Then we'll talk about the no. Place. I'm not here Wednesday. What? I'll be on a jet airplane. So you know what I want to do? I want to keep it all leaving on a jet plane. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm going to let you go right now because I know you got to go. I don't know what you're doing. I'm not going to uh, – will you tell me later or something? I don't want to sure. you know, go into your, into your um, business. But I want the audience right now, the Unfiltered Army, to guess who's going to be our guest co-host. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. The right? Rock? <laughs> Am I setting the bar yeah, too high? I'm pretty sure it will probably be Dean Thomas. <laughs> All right, but you never know. It might be The Rock, guys. They're trying to fill my shoes. Mad is saying it might be The Rock. Dave travels to Jimmy and everybody. Yes. You'll have me in a couple of days. All right, buddy. I'll see you soon. Jimmy, safe travels, buddy. I miss Bye. you already. Me too. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, guys.